Greetings and salutations everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to tonight's night ending bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into tonight's night ending bonus, shall we? Tonight's bonus is the last lecture that Phil Schneider ever did. An American hero, a hero of mine, he, Bill Cooper, Tom Castiello, and a few others, Benowitz, and a few others, even further than that, really were whistleblowers, men of truth, and all taken out or thrown away before they could get everything out. In May of 1995, Phil Schneider did a lecture on what he had discovered seven months later. He was tortured and killed by those whom he had previously worked for. This man's final acts should not go unnoticed. Here is that lecture. It is because of the horrendous structure of the federal government that I feel directly imperiled not to tell anybody about this material. How long I will be able to do this is anyone's guess. However, I would like to mention that this talk is going to be broken up into topics. Each of these topics will have some bearing on what you people are involved in, whether you are patriots or not. I want you to know that these United States are a beautiful place. I have gone to more than 70 countries, and I cannot remember any country that has the beauty as well as the magnificence of its people like these United States. To give you an overview of basically what I am, I started off and went through engineering school. Half of my school was in that field, and I built up a reputation for being a geological engineer, as well as a structural engineer with both military and aerospace applications. I've helped build two main bases in the United States that have some significance as far as what is called the New World Order. The first base is the one at Dulce, New Mexico. I was involved in 1979 in the firefight with the alien humanoids, and I was one of the survivors. I'm probably the only talking survivor you will ever hear. Two other survivors are under close guard. I am the only one left that knows the detailed files of the entire operation. Sixty-six Secret Service agents, FBI, Black Beret, and the like died in that firefight. I was there. Number one, part of what I am going to tell you is going to be very shocking. Part of what I am going to tell you is probably going to be very unbelievable. Though, instead of putting your glasses on, I'm going to ask you to put your skepticals on. But please, feel free to do your own homework. I know the Freedom of Information Act isn't much to go on, but it's the best we've got. 
the local law library is a good place to look for congressional records. So if one continues to do their homework, then one can be standing vigilant in the regard to their country. Deep underground military bases and the black budget. I love the country I am living in more than I love my life, but I would not be standing before you now risking my life if I did not believe it was so. This first part of this talk is going to concern deep underground military bases and the black budget. The black budget is a secretive budget that garners 25% of the gross national product of the United States. The black budget currently consumes $1.25 trillion per two years. At least this amount is used in black programs like those concerned with deep underground military bases. Presently, there are 129 deep underground military bases in the United States. They've been building these 129 bases day and night, unceasingly since the early 1940s. Some of them were built even earlier than that. These bases are basically large cities underground connected by high-speed magneto-leviton trains that have speeds up to Mach 2. Several books have been written about this activity. Al Bellic has my only copy of one of them. Richard Saunder, a Ph.D. architect, has risked his life by talking about this. He worked with a number of government agencies on deep underground military bases in around where you live in Idaho. There are 11 of them. The average depth of these bases is over one mile, and they, again, are basically whole cities underground. They are between 2.66 and 4.25 cubic miles in size. They have laser drilling machines that can drill a tunnel seven miles long in one day. The Black Project sidestep the authority of Congress, which, as we know, is illegal. Right now, the New World Order is depending on these bases. If I had known at the time I was working on them that the NWO was involved, I would not have done it. I was lied to rather extensively. Development of military technology implied German interest in hyperspace technology and more. Basically, as far as technology is concerned, for every calendar year that transpires, mili military technology increases about 44.5 years compared with the increased rate of conventional technology. This is why it is easy to understand that back in 1943, they were able to create, through the use of vacuum tube technology, a ship that could literally disappear from one place to another. My father, Otto Oscar Schneider, fought on both sides of the war. He was originally a U-boat captain and was captured and repatriated in the United States. He was involved with different kinds of concerns, such as the atom bomb, the H-bomb, and the Philadelphia experiment. He invented a high-speed camera that took pictures of the first atomic hydrogen or H-bomb tests in Bikini Island. In July 12th of 1946. I have the original photographs of that test and the photos also show UFOs fleeing the bomb site at a high rate of speed. Bikini Island at the time was infested with them, especially under the water, and the natives had problems with their animals being mutilated. At the time, General MacArthur felt that the next war would be with aliens from another world. Anyway, my father laid the groundwork with theoroticians about the Philadelphia experiment, as well as other experiments. What does that have to do with me? Nothing other than the fact that he was my father. I don't agree with what he did on the other side, but I think he had a lot of guts in coming here. He was hated in Germany. There was a $1 million reward payable in gold to anyone who killed him. Obviously, they did not succeed. Anyway, back to our topic, deep underground bases. 
the firefight at Dulce. Back in 1954, under the Eisenhower administration, the federal government decided to circumvent the Constitution of the United States and form a treaty with alien entities. It was called the 1954 Greta Treaty, which basically made the agreement that the aliens involved could take a few cows and test their implanting techniques on a few human beings, but that they had to give details about the people involved. Slowly, the aliens altered that bargain until they decided they wouldn't abide to it at all. Back in 1979, this was the reality, and the fireflight at Dulce occurred quite by accident. I was involved in building an addition to the deep underground military base at Dulce, which is probably the deepest base. It goes down seven levels and over 2.5 miles deep. At that particular time, we had drilled four distinct holes in the desert, and we were going to link them together and blow out large sections at a time. My job was to go down the holes and check the rock samples and recommend the explosive to deal with that type of rock. As I was headed down there, we found ourselves amidst a large cavern that was full of outer space aliens, otherwise known as large greys. I shot two of them. At the time, there were 30 people down there. About 40 more came down after this started, and all of them got killed. We had surprised the whole underground base of existing aliens. Later, we found out that they had been living on our planet for a long time. This could explain a lot of what is behind the theory of the ancient astronauts. Anyway, I had gotten shot in the chest with one of their weapons, which was a box in their body. That blew a hole in me and gave me a nasty dose of cobalt radiation. I've had cancer because of that. I didn't get really interested in UFO technology until I started to work at Area 51, north of Las Vegas. After about two years recuperating after the 1979 incident, I went back to work for Morrison and Nudson, EG and EG, and other companies. At Area 51, they were testing all kinds of Peculiar spacecraft, how many people here are familiar with Bob Lazar's story? He was a physicist working at Area 51 trying to decipher the propulsion factor in some of these crafts. Now, I am very worried about the activity of the federal government. They have lied to the public, stonewalled senators, and have refused to tell the truth in regards to the alien matters. I can go on and on. I can tell you that I am rather disgruntled. Recently, I knew someone who lived near where I lived in Portland, Oregon. He worked at Gunderson Steel Fabrication, where they make railroad cars. Now, I knew this fella for the better part of 30 years, and he was kind of a quiet type. He came in to see me one day, excited, and he told me they are building prisoner cars, and he was nervous. Gunderson said he had a contact with the federal government to build 10,720 full-length railroad cars, each with 143 pairs of shackles. There are 11 subcontractors in this giant project. Supposedly, Gunderson got over $2 billion for the contract. Bethlehem Steel and other steel outfits are involved. He showed me one of the cars in the rail, ro rail yards in North Portland. He was right. If you multiply 10,720 times 143 times 11, you come up with 15 million. This is probably the number of people who disagree with the federal government. No more can you vote any of these people out of office. Our present structure of government is te technocracy, not democracy, and it is a form of feudalism. This technocracy has nothing to do with the Republic of the United States. These people are godless and have legislated out prayer in public school. 
You can be fined up to $100,000 and two years in prison for praying in school. I believe we can do better. I also believe that the federal government is running the gambit of enslaving the people of the United States. I am not a good speaker, but I'll keep shooting my mouth off until someone puts a bullet into me, because it's worth to talk to a group like this about the atrocities. America's Black Program Contractors There are other problems. I have some interesting 1993 figures. There are 29 prototype stealth aircraft presently. The budget from the U.S. Congress five-year plan for these $245.6 million. You couldn't buy the spare parts for these black programs for that amount. So, we've been lied to. The black budget is roughly $1.3 trillion every two years. A trillion is a thousand billion. A trillion dollars weighs 11 tons. The United States Congress never sees the books involved with this clandestine pot of gold contractors of these programs. EGG, Westinghouse, McDonnell Douglas, Morrison Knudsen, Wackenhut Security Systems, Boeing Aerospace, Lorimar Aerospace, Aerospace in France, Mitsubishi's Industria, Ryder Truck, Bechtel, IG Farben, plus a host of hundreds of more. Is this what we are supposed to be living up to as freedom-loving people? I don't believe so. Star Wars and the apparent alien threat. Still, 68% of the military budget is directly or indirectly affected by the black budget. Star Wars relies heavily upon stealthy weaponry. By the time none of the stealth program would have been available if we had not taken part in the crashed alien discs. None of it. Some of you might ask what the space shuttle is shuttling. Large ingots of special metals that are milled in space and cannot be produced on the surface of the earth. They need the near vacuum of outer space to produce them. We are not even being told the truth, anything close to the truth. I believe our government officials have sold us down the drain, lock, stock, and barrel. Up until several weeks ago, I was employed by the United States government with a Rhyolite 38 clearance factor, one of the highest in the world. I believe the Star Wars program is there solely to act as a buffer to prevent an alien attack. It has... Nothing to do with the Cold War, which was only a ploy to garner money for all the people. For what? The whole lie was planned and executed for the last 75 years. Stealth aircraft technology used by U.S. agencies and the United Nations. Here's another piece of information for you. The Drug Enforcement Agency, DEA, and the ATF rely on stealth technical weaponry for as much as 40% of their operations budget. This is in 93, and the figures have gone up considerably since. The United Nations used American stealth aircraft for over 28% of its collective worldwide operations from 1990 to 1992, according to the Center of Strategic Studies and the United Nations Report 3092. The Guardians of Stealth and Delta Force Origins of the Bosnian Conflict The Guardians of Stealth, there are at least three distinct classifications of police that guard our most well-kept secrets. Number one, the Military Joint Tactical Force, MJTF, sometimes called the Delta Force or Black Beret is a multinational tactical force primarily used to guard various stealth aircraft worldwide. By the way, there are 172 stealth aircraft built. Ten crashed, so there were at last count 162. Bill Clinton signed them away about six weeks ago to the United Nations. 
There have been indications that the Delta Force was sent over to Bosnia during the last days of the Bush administration as a covert sniper force, and that they started taking pot shots at each side of the controversy in order to put, actually start the Bosnian conflict that would be used by succeeding administrations for political purposes. Thoughts on the bombings in the United States? I was hired not long ago to do a report on the World Trade Center bombing. I was hired because I know about 90-some-odd varieties of chemical explosives. I looked at the pictures taken right after the blast. The concrete was puddled and melted. The steel in rebar literally extruded up to six feet longer than its original length. There is only one weapon that can do that, a small nuclear weapon. That's a construction type nuclear device. Obviously, when they say that it was a nitrate explosive that did the damage, they are lying 100%. The people they have in custody probably did, didn't do the crime. As a matter of fact, I have reason to believe that the same group held in custody did do other crimes, such as a killing of a Jewish rabbi in New York. However, I want to further mention that with the last explosion in Oklahoma City, they are saying it was a nitrate or fertilizer bomb that had done it. First, they came out and said it was a thousand pound fertilizer bomb. Then it was 1,500, then 2,000 pounds. Now it's 20,000. You can't put 20,000 pounds of fertilizer in a rider truck. Now, I've never mirrored explosives, per se. I know the chemical structure and application of construction explosives. My reputation is based on it. I helped hollow out more than 13 deep underground bases in the United States. I worked on the Malta project in West Germany, in Spain, and Italy. I can tell you from experience that nitrate explosion would not have hardly shattered the windows of the federal building in Oklahoma City. It would have killed a few people and knocked part of the facing off the building, but it would never have done that kind of damage. I believe I have been lied to, and I am not working it any longer. So, I'm telling you that you've been lied to. The truth behind the Republican contract with America. I don't perceive at this time that we have too much more than six months left of life on, in this country. At present rate, we are the laughing stock of the world because we are being hoodwinked by so many evil people that are running this country. I think that we can do better. I think people over 45 are seriously worried about their future. I'm going to run some scary scenarios by you. The contract with America it contains the same terminology that Adolf Hitler used to subvert Germany in 1931. The contract with America is the last-ditch effort by our federal government to tear away the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Some statistics on black helicopter presence. The black helicopters, there are over 64,000 black helicopters in the United States. For each hour that goes by, there is one being built. This Is this the proper use of our money? What does the federal government need 64,000 tactical helicopters for? If they are not trying to enslave us, I doubt if the entire military needs 64,000 worldwide. I doubt if all the world needs that many. There are 157 F-117A stealth aircraft loaded with LIDAR and computer-enhanced imaging radar. They can see you walking from room to room when they fly over your house. They see objects in your house from the air with a variation limit of 1 inch to 30,000 miles. That's how accurate it is. Now, I am. Now I worked in the federal government for a long time, and I know exactly how they handled their business. Government earthquake device, AIDS, and the as used as a bioweapon based on alien excretions. The federal government has now invented an earthquake device. I am a geologist, and I know what I'm talking about. 
with the Kobe earthquake in Japan. There was no pulse wave as in the normal earthquake. None. In 1989, there was an earthquake in San Francisco. There was no. Pulse wave with that one either. It's a Tesla device being used for evil purposes. The black budget programs have subverted science as we know it. Look at AIDS invented by the National Ordnance Laboratory in Chicago, Illinois in 72. It's a biological weapon to be used against the people of the United States. The reason I know this is that I have seen documentation by the Office of Strategic Services, which, by the way, is still in operation to this day through the CDC in Atlanta. They used glandular excretions of animals, humans, and alien humanoids to create this virus. These alien humanoids the government is hobnobbing with are the worst news. There is absolutely no defense against their germs, none. They are a biological weapon of terrible consequence. Every alien on our planet needs to be isolated. Saddam Hussein killed 3.5 million Kurdish people with a similar biological weapon. Do we, the people of this planet, deserve this? No, we don't. But we are doing nothing about it. Every moment we waste, we are doing other people on this planet a disservice. Right now, I am dying of cancer that I contracted because of my work for the federal government. I may live six months, I may not. I will tell you one thing. If I keep speaking out like I am, maybe God will give me the life to talk my head off. I will break every law that it takes to talk my head off. Eleven of my best friends in the last 22 years have been murdered. Eight of those murders were called suicides. Before I went to talk in Las Vegas, I drove a friend down to Joshua Tree near 29 Palms. I drove into the mountains in order to get to Needles, California, and I was followed by two government E-350 vans with G-14 plates, each with a couple of occupants, one of which had an Uzi. All right, guys, that last statement, and one of them had an Uzi. Government vans. And then he was found dead in his room uh strangled but there was a lot of just very strange circumstances around his death and uh it's kind of it's kind of hard to believe that <laughs> phil schneider offed himself i don't buy it i really don't and haven't for a long time and there's people that feel the same. So government's going to tell us that he did. They want us to. Because they want to keep their secrets. Look, it's been far too long. Far too long. This beautiful country that we live in. Was founded by our founding fathers. We the people. Do you think that they. George Washington. Thomas Jefferson. Ben Franklin, Quincy Adams, John Quincy Adams, they would all, do you think they would agree with what's going on nowadays? They were like us, common folk, you know, people that just wanted to live life free, free to practice their religion, free to work, free to raise their family. All the government cares about is how much money they make. How much more money can they make? And that's just absolutely disgusting. To off people over money and secrets. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I really appreciate all the support. Your support is what keeps this channel growing and going and what makes it a place where people can share their experiences ideas and theories please stay safe happy healthy and ever vigilant keeping an eye on our children pets family and friends these creatures are real they're out there and they are dangerous 
share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for the truth. God bless.